drop somewhere. So running out is not really the subject we need to address. The real important point is when the growth of the past, which has driven the world's economy, reaches a top and begins to decline. O geólogo americano Dr. King Herber abordou essa questão há 50 anos. Criou um modelo para prever a quantidade de petróleo remanescente. A curva do Dr. Herber. It turns out that in 1956, when the United States was almost double the oil producer of anyone else in the world and we'd held that position for the better part of the entire 20th century, the senior scientist at Shell Oil Company, um, a guy named Dr. M. King Hubbard uh, of the now famous Hubbard Curve, uh, at, a, at a technical conference predicted that sometime in the early 1970s the United States was going to peak as an oil province. And once we peaked, it didn't really matter how much we drilled, uh, we were going to go into slow and irreversible decline. This technique I used uh, 1956. The date is interesting because at that time the curve was still going up very steeply. And the average opinion, informed opinion of the people of the U.S. Petroleum Ministry was that this peak date would not occur before the end of this century. A uh, common expression was it wouldn't happen in my lifetime or my grandchildren could worry about oil. Ao contrário do que pensavam os céticos, as previsões estavam certas. Em 1970, a produção de petróleo dos Estados Unidos atingiu o auge. Isso foi o início de um longo declínio que nenhuma nova descoberta conseguiu impedir. O real critical point of this is that the peak of production comes when half the total has been produced. So there's a, this is called the midpoint of depletion. When half of it's gone, we can look at this glass, for example. Half of this glass has been drunk. After this point, one can see that the party's coming to an end eventually. This is the halfway point. We've used, we've drunk more than remains. And so at the end of the day, we're coming down to the end. It's as simple as looking at three glasses on a table. It starts full, the halfway point, and it ends. And if you depict this in terms of production or, or drinking it, well, you reach a peak of what you drink, and, and eventually the party comes to an end. Os especialistas concordam que o declínio progressivo dos hidrocarbonetos é inevitável, pois são uma forma de energia não renovável. Porém, há dois pontos de discordância: a data em que a produção de petróleo começará a cair e o nível de produção que será atingido. Aujourd'hui, il y a en gros euh, deux écoles euh, opposées. Les pessimistes qui nous disent on est très près du pic, c'est dans les 5 à 10 ans qui viennent, et à un niveau peu supérieur au niveau de production mondiale actuelle, hein, qui est de 75 millions de barils jour en chiffre rond pour il y a deux ans, et... Euh, disons, euh, il pourrait augmenter de, de 10 ou 15 selon, selon eux. Et puis les, les optimistes, je vais prendre les, les plus optimistes, par exemple l'Agence internationale de l'énergie qui nous dit non, non, c'est après 2030-2040 et à un niveau très supérieur au niveau actuel, disons, euh, on va continuer à monter sans problème jusqu'à 120 millions de barils le jour. Alors, il est difficile de dire qui a tort, qui a raison, mais je crois personnellement que les pessimistes sont plus près de la vérité que la vision officielle euh, d'une production qui pourrait encore augmenter de plus de 50% par rapport à la production actuelle. Je crois que c'est impossible et que le pic, euh, le plus probablement, ce sera d'ailleurs plutôt un plateau qu'un pic, ben c'est dans une vingtaine d'années, c'est-à-dire demain à l'échelle de l'histoire économique. O declínio está próximo. Nossa sociedade e modo de vida serão abalados mais drasticamente do que foram pelas revoluções neolítica e industrial? Well, we're standing here in the extreme west of Ireland, and over there is a Bronze Age tomb, 4,000 years old. And it's often said 
that the Stone Age didn't end because we ran out of stones. It's perfectly true, we didn't. We found bronze, which is copper, which was mined from little veins around here. And copper and, 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 and uh, tin put together made bronze, which was a better, a better uh, tool and a better weapon than stone. So we moved from the Stone Age to the Bronze Age, and over the last 2,000 years, we've moved to iron, to steel, to the Industrial Revolution just only 200 years ago. And we have seen the enormous expansion of, of the economy, the world. Everywhere you look, there's been an enormous progress. And many people would say that this progress was driven by money. <clears throat> it's not so. What drove this enormous progress was energy. And most of this energy came from oil in the last 50, 100 years. So when we reach the peak of oil production, which is going to happen any day now, over the next few years, we face the decline of the fundamental energy that has driven the progress for the last century. And we fi find this decline without, at the moment, any sight of a better substitute. We're not moving from stone to bronze. This time, we're moving from bronze back to stone. And therefore, this is an absolutely critical subject which will affect every aspect of life. Uh, oil, 90% of transport fuel comes from oil. Transport means trade. And agriculture makes heavy demands upon oil in many ways, to, to provide synthetic fertilizers, to provide irrigation, to provide transport from the fields to the towns. So we are facing an absolutely critical situation as this fundamental energy begins to decline, and it poses the question of how many people can actually be supported on a planet with declining oil. So this is the most critical subject that we can really address, and it's a very strange thing that such an important matter is not better understood, especially by the world's governments and especially by the, the world's leaders and thinkers. And the reason for this is that because there is no particular difficulty in understanding the discovery trends or how big the oil fields are or what remains to be found. This is not a particularly difficult thing to do. It is an issue of mindset. People just cannot bring themselves to think that something fundamental is going to change. And yet, that is the absolute message that the rocks tell us. And you can't change the rocks. They were laid down in the geological past. They are beyond human intervention. So I think we've reached the point when we really have to have to make a big uh, effort to raise awareness of this thing, to bring this to the attention of the, the world's leaders, because the tensions of the transition to the new world that dawns is certainly going to be difficult.